All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Albert Ruiz, and I am the Communications Director for Assemblymember Lisa Calderon and your host and moderator for this morning's event. Throughout the event, we have our district office intern, Natalie Lopez, who will be present in the chat, providing resources as we move through each section and monitoring for questions. We will hold all questions to the end, where we will open the floor to our DMV expert to provide the answers you seek. Now it is an honor to introduce Assemblymember Lisa Calderon, who was elected in November 2020 to represent the 57th Assembly District. She currently serves as the Chair of the Committee on Human Services and is a member of the Aging and Long-Term Care Committee, Appropriations Committee, Emergency Management Committee, and the Public Employment and Retirement Committee. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Assemblymember Lisa Calderon. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy Saturday morning to join us for this California DMV webinar. I'm so pleased to partner with the California Department of Motor Vehicles to host this event today, where you'll learn to take advantage of the resources they have to offer. As you know, the DMV provides many services in their physical offices, but the onset of COVID-19 pandemic presented many challenges as many places of businesses closed for in-person services. That's why I'm so excited for today's presentation because we're gonna learn about how the DMV adapted to the pandemic and shifted to much needed services online. One of the most important changes that we'll learn about today is the extension for California residents to apply for their real IDs, which are due in October of 2021. So I hope you take advantage of today's resources and please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Now, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Armando Recio from the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Thank you. Hello and good morning. Uh, my name is Armando Recio. I've been working for the Department of Motor Vehicles for over 20 years out of the Driver Safety Office. And first I wanna say thank you to Assemblymember uh, Lisa Calderon and her amazing staff for putting this together today. My goal today is to help, uh, help you conduct business with the DMV in the easiest possible way. I'm going to focus on a couple of topics that seem to be of most interest to everyone. And I'm excited to share with you our expanded online services and assist you with applying for the Real ID driver's license or a Real ID identification card. I'll be showing some informational videos that I think will be helpful. And I encourage you to have a pen and paper ready uh, to take some notes. The DMV does take uh, the health and safety of our customers and employees seriously. We require everyone to wear masks, we take temperatures, and we uh, encourage everyone uh, to adhere to practice a physical distancing, which is six feet apart. Our service windows have plexiglass, and for driving tests, our examiners wear protective gear, they use seat covers and floor mats. The COVID emergency has led the DMV to implement new online services and expand others to reduce the office traffic. Take a look at some of the many online options now available on your schedule. And can you please play the services overview video? Hello, doing business with the California Department of Motor Vehicles has never been easier. We've been working to modernize the DMV by simplifying our processes. Our goal is to improve the customer experience, your experience, and I want to show you how these enhancements are designed to benefit you. We redesigned our website so that it's more responsive, user-friendly, and works well on your mobile device. We've added more online services so you can conduct business with us from your home or office. We've also created new ways to help you complete transactions online that previously required you to visit a field office. We've made it much easier to create an online account and use similar technology to expand the DMV Express experience, which expedites the Real ID application process. We've increased the capability of our self-service kiosks and added more languages. And if you have to visit a DMV office, we can now send you a text message to let you know that a representative will soon be available to help you. As you can see, we're focused on creating the DMV of the future, a DMV that meets your expectations. So let's look more closely at the improvements I just mentioned. Let's start with a quick look at our website, where you can complete DMV business on your time, 
When you visit dmv.ca.gov, you'll notice that our homepage uses simple language and offers an easy to use format. You'll also see that our most common transactions are prominently displayed, like online services and information about Real ID. Our website is also a great resource. Check out our guides for teen and senior drivers, Californians with disabilities, veterans, boat owners, and many others. So now let's take a closer look at our website. Let's click online services to see if you can avoid a DMV office visit. As you can see, there are a lot of things you can do using your computer, your smartphone, or a tablet. For example, you can renew your driver's license, ID card, and vehicle registration, request a replacement license plate sticker or registration card, and even change your address and order special interest or personalized license plates. We've also enhanced our online services so you can complete transactions online, transactions that used to require an office visit. These transactions are a bit more involved and still require assistance from a DMV representative, but it's not done face-to-face -face anymore, it is virtual. You fill out the form for things like transferring a title, submitting a medical exam report, or renewing a commercial driver's license, then you upload the necessary documents and a DMV representative communicates with you through email to make sure that everything was submitted correctly. And the DMV plans to add more services in the future. Let's go back to the home page now and this time let's click on Real ID. Beginning October 1st, 2021, you'll need a Real ID or another federally approved ID to fly within the United States and enter secure federal facilities. A California Real ID is marked with a bear and star. To get one, simply fill out the online application, upload your documents using your computer or phone, and then print or snap a picture of the confirmation code. Your confirmation code serves as your reservation. Show that code to a DMV representative when you arrive at the DMV office, and you'll receive a DMV Express experience. And don't forget to bring your uploaded documents with you because we need to verify them in person. Again, to get a real ID, you must visit a DMV office to complete the application process. If you absolutely have to visit a DMV field office to complete your transaction, we now offer text messaging. If you provide us with your cell phone number when you check in, we'll put you in the queue and then send you a text message just before a DMV representative is ready to help you. This frees up your time. You can go grab a cup of coffee or run a quick errand while you wait. Just make sure that you return to the office right away when you receive that text. You need to be in the office when it's your turn. We also encourage you to use our convenient self-service kiosks. We have more than 360 of them located throughout the state. You'll find them at some of our field offices but also many retail locations like grocery stores. Our kiosks offer limited services, but we're working to add more features. One of the most popular transactions is vehicle registration renewals. That's because you receive your license plate sticker and registration card right on the spot. With a few taps of the screen, you can also submit proof of insurance, file for planned non-operation status, and pay a $14 vehicle registration suspension reinstatement fee. You can find a kiosk near you by visiting our website at dmv.ca.gov. On our homepage, just scroll down to DMV Now Kiosks and click Find a Kiosk Near You. It's really that simple. We also offer a number of helpful tools that can assist you with preparing for a drive test, finding resources for senior and teen drivers, and keeping you up to date on DMV programs. On our website, you'll find the California Driver Handbook and it's offered in various languages. We also have handbooks for commercial drivers, motorcycles, recreational vehicles, trailers, and others. After studying the handbook, you can also take practice tests that we offer online. We have video tutorials to help you as well. Check out our Rules of the Road video series on the DMV YouTube channel. We also have experts dedicated to assisting senior drivers and their families. In Southern California, you can reach the Senior Driver Ombudsman and Outreach Unit by calling 310-615-3552.
In Northern California, you can reach a representative at 916-657-6464. And if you want to stay up to date on DMV programs, then you should follow us on DMV's social media. On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, you'll receive the latest information about new service options, office renovations and closures, updates on driver license and registration programs, and much, much more. We at the California DMV are working to keep you informed and improve your customer experience. Don't forget to always check our website first to find out if you can complete your transaction online. We don't want you to make an unnecessary trip to a DMV office. We're committed to offering you more service options that you can complete from your home or office. Doing business with the DMV on your schedule. So as you can see, we're working hard to improve the customer experience. Now we do receive a lot of questions from senior drivers. Usually senior drivers 70 and older must visit a DMV office to renew their driver's license. However, during the COVID-19 emergency, seniors who are eligible can renew their driver's license online. Even if you receive a notice uh, in the mail that says you must visit a DMV office, I highly encourage you to go online first to see if you can renew it online without coming in. We do offer a lot of services focused on senior drivers and their families, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't know about them. This next video, I hope, will provide you with helpful information. Can you please play the senior driver information video? Hello. The California Department of Motor Vehicles has a unique unit that focuses on the needs and concerns of senior drivers and their families. It's called the Senior Driver Ombudsman and Outreach Unit, and it's staffed with dedicated DMV representatives who are committed to helping senior drivers maintain their driving independence. After all, we know that mobility matters. Our team makes sure that senior drivers are treated with dignity, respect, and fairly consistent with our laws and regulations. We do that by offering outreach seminars for large and small audiences. I'll be providing you with some contact numbers in just a little bit. Our team also assists with individual cases that deal with public safety, sort of a go-between to resolve DMV issues. We want to keep seniors driving for as long as they can do so safely. In fact, research has shown that senior drivers are some of the safest drivers on our roads and highways. California law requires drivers who are 70 years of age or older to renew their driver's license in person when it expires. Here's what you can expect when you visit a DMV office. You'll need to take a short 18-question driver knowledge exam, pass a vision examination, and have a new picture taken for your driver's license. You'll have to repeat this process every five years. Again, this is a state law and not a DMV mandate. However, Throughout the COVID-19 emergency, seniors 70 and older can renew their driver's license online or by mail, eliminating an office visit. Again, this will remain in effect only during the COVID-19 emergency. We know that as we get older, our reflexes slow down and we may experience issues with our vision. These types of physical changes can put you and other drivers at risk. If you find yourself in this position, you may be asked to come back to our office for a re-examination. Generally, law enforcement, medical professionals, family and friends submit these types of requests. The DMV then investigates to evaluate your level of risk. You also may be asked to provide medical information and take a knowledge exam and a driving test. Now, if your medical condition impacts your mobility, you may be able to apply for a disabled person parking placard. They're available to both drivers and passengers, and they can only be used when the person to whom it's assigned is inside the vehicle. That means it's illegal to lend it to a family member or a friend, use someone else's, or alter a placard or placard identification card. To request a placard, you need to complete an application, which includes a section that requires a licensed medical professional to complete and sign. These placards are honored in all 50 states. Right now, 
permanent placards are automatically renewed every two years. But beginning in June 2023, placard holders will need to submit a renewal notice every six years. A medical certification is not required. Temporary placards are also available and valid up to six months. You can find more information on the DMV website at dmv.ca.gov. Overall, seniors are responsible drivers. They're constantly monitoring their health, assessing their driving abilities, and evaluating when it's time to stop driving. We recommend that seniors discuss this transition with family and friends and develop a plan on how to move around and remain as independent as possible. There are several options you should investigate. You may want to find out if there's a paratransit service in your area. Identify public transportation and rideshare companies. Reach out to senior centers and check if family and friends may be able to offer you a lift. Don't forget that many grocery stores and pharmacies offer delivery service, medications can be ordered by mail, and you can also shop online. Now, if you're concerned about the driving ability of a family member or someone you know, it's very important to approach this issue with compassion. Now, you may feel frustrated and even guilty about depriving someone of their freedom to drive, but remain positive and supportive. Older drivers may think that authorities, friends, or relatives are out to get them, and that's why it's important to be sensitive about how you start this conversation. And remember, age alone should not be a basis for limiting someone's driving privilege or taking it away. You can find more information in the DMV Senior Guide for Safe Driving, which is available on our website, dmv.ca.gov. We also offer video tutorials to help you brush up on your driving skills. Just click the YouTube icon that you find at the bottom of our homepage. Here are some other helpful resources. AARP offers a mature driving program. AAA has a car fit program to help your personal vehicle fit you better. And you may want to check with the CHP about its Drive Smart classes. And as promised earlier, here's how you can contact our DMV Senior Driver Ombudsman and Outreach Unit. If you live in Southern California, call 310-615-3552. In Northern California, the number is 916-657-6464. DMV representatives are available to participate in outreach seminars to promote driver safety in California with an emphasis on senior concerns. Did you know by the year 2030, an estimated one in five drivers in the United States will be 65 years or older? Well, that's why the California DMV will continue to work with our seniors to maintain their driving independence for as long as they can do so safely. That was a lot of great information for seniors. Now, we also receive a lot of questions about real ID, such as what is it, do I need to get it, and if I need to get it, how do I get it? This new requirement is scheduled to take effect October 1st of this year. To obtain a real ID, you will need to visit a DMV office. The good news is that you can complete most of the application process from home using our online services. You get to fill out an online application, upload your documents, and print the confirmation code. Your confirmation code reserves, or serves, I should say, as your reservation, and you show it to a DMV representative when you arrive at the DMV office you'll receive a DMV Express experience. Most important, don't forget to bring your documents that you uploaded as they will need to be verified at the office. Here is a step-by-step -step tutorial about what you need to do in order to apply for a Real ID identification card or a Real ID driver's license. Can you please play the Real ID step-by-step -step video? Thank you. New federal ID requirements to board domestic flights begin October 1st, 2021. That means to get through security, you'll need to show a passport or another federally compliant document, like a Real ID driver license or identification card. This new federal mandate comes in the wake of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. The 9-11 Commission recommended to establish minimum security standards for states to issue driver licenses and identification cards. And that is Real ID. Now getting a Real ID is not required, but if you choose to get one, 
You'll need to apply in person at a DMV office and bring some specific documentation. Proof of your identity and possibly a name change document, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Proof that you have a social security number and two proofs of your California residency, your address. If you meet this criteria, you'll receive a Real ID driver license or identification card like this one, and it'll be marked with a barren star. If you decide you don't want a Real ID, then you can simply renew online or by mail, and you'll receive a driver license or identification card with the phrase federal limits apply, and you won't be able to use it to fly within the United States or enter secure federal facilities when the new federal ID requirements begin October 1st, 2021. So let's get started with the Real ID application process. First, you'll need to provide proof of identity. You can use a certified copy of a U.S. birth certificate, and it may be printed on special paper. Here are a couple of examples. Look for an official seal or stamp, and make sure that your birth certificate is not laminated, abbreviated, or abstract. Remember, a certified birth certificate is not the one issued by the hospital. You can also use a valid U.S. passport or passport card. Unexpired foreign passport with a valid U.S. visa and approved I-94 form. Certificate of naturalization or citizenship or a valid unexpired permanent resident card. If the name you currently use is different than the name that appears on your identity document, you'll need to show us why your name changed. You can do that by bringing in a certified marriage certificate, original adoption or domestic partnership documents, or a certified dissolution of marriage domestic partnership. If you were married several times and your name changed each time, we need to see all of those related documents, sort of a timeline. Next, you'll need to prove you have a social security number. This can be an original social security card or a pay stub or W-2 form that shows the entire social security number, like the one in this example. You know, these days, a lot of companies block most of the numbers for security reasons, so make sure that you look carefully. You can also provide a SSA or non-SSA 1099 form. And finally, we need to verify your address with two different proofs of California residency. Here are some examples. A rental or lease agreement, mortgage bill, cell phone and home utility bills, school, medical, employment, or insurance documents, California certificate of vehicle, vessel title, or registration, or a bank statement. You can find a full list of acceptable documents at realid.dmv.ca.gov. And on that same webpage, we offer a convenient interaction checklist that will guide you through the process of gathering all the necessary documents. So, let's review. If you want to continue to use your California driver license or identification card to fly within the United States, access secure federal facilities, or enter military bases, you'll want to apply for a real ID. To do so, you'll need to visit a DMV office. You'll also want to fill out the online driver license application before you show up because it is a time saver. And use our convenient interactive checklist at realid.dmv.ca.gov. It'll help you bring the correct documents to prove your identity, social security number, and California residency. If all your documents don't have the same name, you'll also need to bring documentation to show why your name changed. Remember, new federal ID requirements for boarding flights within the United States or entering secure federal facilities take effect October 1st, 2021. You can use a passport or other federally approved document like a Real ID driver license or identification card. So get prepared at realid.dmv.ca.gov. Again, I can't stress enough uh, to begin the Real ID application process online and upload your documents. It will definitely be a time saver when you visit a DMV office to complete the transaction. Don't forget to print or take a picture of your confirmation code and bring it with you to a DMV office along with your uploaded documents for verification. The cost of a Real ID driver's license is $38 and the cost of a Real ID identification card is $33. For those of you that are 62 or older, you can apply for a no-fee identification card. 
you can only have one real ID, meaning you can only either have a real ID driver's license or a real ID identification card. I encourage you to visit realid.dmv.ca.gov where you'll find a lot of helpful information and a checklist to help you round up the correct documents. I do want to point out that you need to ensure that when you go to the DMV website, uh, you are at dmv.ca.gov and not .com.net or .org. Uh, those may route you to a different place. So just ensure that you're using our .gov uh, website. Uh, this time I have no further information and I'm open for any uh, questions and I'll try to answer as many as I can. All right, Armando, thank you so much for such a lovely presentation. At this time, we will move to our Q&A portion. If you haven't asked the question already, you can type your question in the chat and our team will make sure to ask that question. But right now, I'd like to proceed with the first that we received from Ms. Charlene Kalak. Um, she asks, hello, uh, she works with the California Conservation Corps, which of course is a youth program for 18 to 25. One of the requirements is to promote within the program is to obtain a commercial passenger license. Um, at this time, it's been very hard to, to schedule behind the wheel test. What is the plan for the DMV as we move um, to more and more reopenings to increase these behind the wheel tests? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, right now, we are limited as to how many drive tests we can schedule uh, per day. Uh, but that is changing uh, with the you know coming months. Uh, I believe they'll be opening up more slots to schedule drive test appointments. Uh, what I would recommend is to keep checking online, uh, keep uh, trying to see if there's any new um, drive test openings that are being opened. Um, unfortunately, uh, there, I don't have an answer as to when there'll be even more exams being given. Uh, I would just highly recommend keep checking the online uh, website and you can call our number as well at 800-777-0133. That's our phone center and they can give you further information and possibly um, have you uh, schedule a drive test appointment at a different commercial site in order to take that commercial uh, drive test. So maybe the office closest to you doesn't have enough openings for you or to accommodate your test. Uh, but possibly a, an office a little bit further out that does commercial drive tests may have uh, sooner openings. So I would recommend calling our 800 number uh, to see if there's any openings that would help you um, in your situation. That's perfect. Armando, and can you repeat that number one more time for that, uh, that service center? Yes, it's 800-777-0133. That's our DMV call center, and they can help you not only with that question, uh, but with any DMV related question that you may have or to set up an appointment as well. All right, lovely, lovely. The next question we have is from Veronica Chacon. Um, in the queue, at least she has two questions that I can see. Her first comment, uh, she used to she used the online service to pay her vehicle registration, which is a very simple process, um, but she was charged an extra $40 service charge. Will that service charge continue? I'm not familiar with a $40 service charge. Um, my question would be if uh, she he or she went through uh, an outside party, a registration service uh, or a third party, uh, and not just straight to DMV's website. So I'm not really familiar with a $40 uh, fee for a registration on top of the registration charge. Okay, and her next question uh, was regarding the real ID. Um, they're taking a trip to San Antonio, Texas in November, uh, do is an appointment necessary to obtain a real ID? And are real IDs required for uh, those under age of 18? She has a son that is 16 years old. Okay, for that second part of the question, as far as for the son, uh, I would recommend that she visit the TSA website to get information whether to inform her of whether the TSA is gonna require a real ID uh, for that, uh, for her son. If he has a passport, he can definitely use a passport. Uh, now, as far as the first part of the question, uh, let me see here. And I'm sorry, Albert, can you repeat that first part? Yes, so her family's planning a trip to San Antonio, Texas in November. Do they need, are, uh, is an appointment necessary uh, to obtain a real ID? Well, we highly recommend you get an appointment. It makes it that much easier. But if you decide to go in there without an appointment, I'd recommend going on a Saturday and you can go on our website to uh, find what offices are open on Saturdays and what their hours are. Um, I personally went without an appointment on a Saturday. 
uh, to my local DMV office and I went in the afternoon and I found that in the afternoon there is a lot less people than there is in the mornings and I was able to go in and out um, when I went it was about 10 minutes uh, I'm not saying it's going to be 10 minutes for you but it could be um, again I highly recommend you make an appointment but if you decide that you just uh, our schedules our appointment schedules don't work for your schedule by all means you can come in um, I'd recommend on a Saturday afternoon to one of those offices and again you can go to our website and it tells you what offices are open on Saturdays. All right, perfect. Um, a question I'm seeing pop up is if you already have a driver's license, can you add the real ID to that? Is it a separate process? Is it a new ID identification card in, in total? It would be a new driver's license or identification card because it's going to have that little bear with the star in the top right corner. And unfortunately, if you've already received your license, uh, you've already renewed your license and you have your physical license with you, it would be a, a new process. You'd have to apply again uh, for the Real ID driver's license or Real ID identification card. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, like you said, let's say I already got my driver's license renewed for this year. The October deadline's coming up. I have to apply again because the driver's license will need that bear with the star on the top right to verify that it is a real id correct you will have to go through the you know like you can go on our website and get the checklist and it tells you what documents you need to bring in and you're going to have to take another picture and bring in those documents so that they can be verified um, if you go through our website upload the documents and come in with that confirmation number it definitely makes it a lot easier for you but yes, in order, as far as answering your question, you do have to apply for a real ID, uh, driver's license or identification card. It would be a whole new one. Okay. Um, next question. In terms of changing your driver's license address, is that something that can be done online? Yes, that's actually something new that um, got added to our online services. You can change your address. Uh, that first, I believe it was the first video we played, gave you uh, a lot of information of our new services that we're offering um, as a result of COVID, uh, the situation. Um, we've expanded services and that is one of them. You can go online and change your address. Okay, perfect. I have another question here from Mr. Mark Wilson, who hasn't owned a vehicle in, in several years. Um, with that with that fact, um, is it still possible for him to take a driver's test without owning a, a car? Yes, you can bring in a vehicle as long as it's uh, street legal, it's insured, and you're covered on that insurance. Meaning your name doesn't have to appear on the insurance card, but it definitely doesn't, it, it needs to not say that you're excluded. So as long as you're covered on the insurance for the vehicle you're bringing and it is currently registered and in good running order, you can use a different vehicle. Um, I've even heard of uh, people renting cars from a rental agency in order to take the test. Okay, so you can use a rental car as long as you are included on the insurance as being protected in the case of an accident, correct? Correct. You need to be on insurance. And for a rental car, I believe you have to be on that rental agreement. Okay. Um, I, believe... I would add that some driving schools actually have cars that they can use as well. So they can check with driving schools as well. Gotcha. Uh, we just have a, we had a question come in right now. Uh, has the DMV improved its security systems? I assume this is this in reference to well, let's take it twofold. Um, with a lot of things being moved online, is there can people feel safe with uh, sharing that information online? Yes, uh, definitely feel safe uploading your documents to our system. Uh, it is protected. Um, we take security uh, very, very seriously. Um, as DMV employees, we go through security training as well. Um, every year uh, we uh, get trained and we train our staff as well. Uh, so we do use the latest technologies. So I would definitely encourage you to uh, feel safe as far as um, uploading documents to our website. It is secured. Uh, but adding to that, I would definitely uh, want to make sure that when you're on our website, you, it's dmv.ca.gov, G-O-V. That's very important. I don't want you going onto a different website that has DMV in its name. Uh, so just make sure you're at dmv.ca.gov. That is our website. Okay. 
Um, I'm not seeing any new questions at this moment, but uh, I'll give you an extra minute or two. If you have not had a, a question answered, please feel free to type it again in the, in the chat. Um, I, I, I do see a question from Charles Jackson. Will this video be available for future reference? Uh, yes, Charles, you, we can, uh, we'll, we'll be able to make these videos available. Uh, again, it's on their, on their YouTube channel, which, uh, Armando, can you go ahead and repeat that for us? What's the YouTube, uh, channel's name? Well, it's a California department of, of motor vehicles, uh, YouTube channel. If you go to our website, um, it has a lot of links there and you can click onto the video links and see these videos. And uh, Albert, I believe you will be putting uh, links to these videos uh, in this uh, webinar as well. Yes, that is correct. So we will make this a uh, webinar public once more um, on, our, on our website and on our social media uh, for the assembly members office. But please, I, if, if there are any follow-up questions that we aren't able to get to today, I, I highly encourage you to reach out to our office via phone or our website. Our, uh, our intern, Natalie Lopez, will be able to provide that. Um, but um, yeah, we'll provide that in the chat. You can reach out to us and we'll do everything we can to make sure that you get your question answered. I'm gonna go ahead and, and look through right now to see if we have any any other questions that we can. Okay, and Albert, I do want to point out, uh, DMV does have an uh, Instagram account, uh, so we're on social media, and if you, if you follow us on social media, you'll see a lot of uh, upcoming uh, events or uh, information that we're pointing out to the public, and a lot of times it comes out on social media before even I get that information. So I've learned of uh, many DMV processes or new things coming on just by looking at their Instagram account. So definitely follow us on, on social media. Okay, and we have we have several more questions that have come in right now. The first one from Mr. Jeffrey Aflalo. Um, for the real ID, do you have to repeat the application process and resubmit the documents for changes or upgrades uh, to the similar to like the licensing process when you have changes to your um, information? Um, I would ask to, uh, if it can be more specific as what changes are they referring to? Is it just like an address change, or they're changing a name, anything like that? Yeah, it's just, it's in reference to changes to the license itself. So I assume once you once you get that new uh, license with the real ID um, information on it, let's say you want to go about changing the information that is present on the ID. Um, oh, specifically class changes. Is is uh, is there a, any change to that process? There wouldn't be a change to the process that I'm aware of. Uh, it would be the same as it is now. Once you get the real ID identification card or driver's license, it's just like a regular license at that point. Uh, you'll be able to renew online or by mail uh, just as you would your regular uh, non-compliant, what we call non-compliant license. Um, but in this case, if you're changing something after you've received the real ID uh, driver's license, then you'd go through the same process. Um, you'd take the necessary testing or bring any additional documents that the DMV would normally require for that class change. Okay, cool. Um, let's see the next question from uh, Sunny Yoon. They have a real ID now. Do they have to go to the DMV when they renew? When they have to renew that license? If they have a real ID, driver's license, or identification now, uh, when the time comes to renew, you'll they'll get a letter in the mail, and it'll tell you at that point whether they need you to go in or not. Normally, you don't have to go in. It just it's a case by case. Uh, some drivers um, will have to come in for different reasons, but if you've already had your real ID driver's license, you'll get a renewal in the mail um, that'll tell you that you can renew it by mail or renew it online. Okay. Yeah, we only need you to come in once to bring in those documents. Once you bring them in and we verify them, and that's it. That's the only time you'll have to bring them in. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Next comment. Um, we have a. We have an individual who's 65 and their license expires in August. They're not currently driving and they're wondering if maybe they should wait for the license to expire and then apply for the real ID to save time. Um, you can do that. I mean, if it expires and you won't be able to drive in the meantime while you're um, waiting to go to the DMV to uh, apply for the real ID, uh, I would encourage you to possibly, if it expires, I believe you said August, uh, Albert, if it's an August, maybe two months before that. So uh, in June, 
set up an appointment and have your documents ready and, and apply for the real ID driver's license or identification card. So when yours expires, uh, you'll have a valid one with you. Gotcha. Um, we have one, we have another question here. What's the process to get veteran designation on your, on your identification or driver's license? That's a good question. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, and basically there is a form that you bring in, uh, showing your veteran status. Uh, you do have to, uh, bring that into the DMV, uh, office, and then they'll put that, you know, you'll get it in the mail, but you'll get a license with the veteran status, uh, on the license itself. Um, the name of the form, I don't really, um, have it at the top of my head right now. I know it's uh, DD, uh, something, but, um, that's a form that just, uh, basically it shows your veteran status and you would bring that to the DMV office. Uh, they'll definitely um, process it, and then you'll receive a license with the veteran status on it. And and um, just to, just going off that, if if ever you need assistance with um, any of these forms or documents, please feel free to reach out to our office. Um, we have we have dedicated caseworkers that can help you do that process as well, and help liaise between the uh, the sev different agencies um, to help you get get the information that you need. So I. I Highly encourage you to reach out to our office as well as the DMV. Um, Veronica, Veronica Chacon had had a, a comment that she just looked up that the it's not required for minors who are under eighteen to have the real ID. They just oh, need a so companion. They just need a companion with acceptable identification. Uh, um, okay. So, so uh, did they get that from the TSA website that I correct, mentioned? Correct. Correct. Oh. From the straight from the TSA. So thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Cohn, for for going going ahead and providing that uh, to the chat, um, I will do one more call for any questions that we have not been able to get to um, that we can ask uh, before we wrap up. So, um, go, I'll go ahead and give you all uh, about another minute to type any remaining questions you have in the chat. You know, and Albert, for that one uh, customer that um, re, uh, was getting in, uh, trying to get information regarding the veteran um, addition to the license, I would recommend them call the 800 number uh, that we gave out, and they can tell them the number of the form or the name of the form that uh, he would need to bring in, he or she would need to bring in. Okay, I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and I'll post that. I'll post the lovely message that Natalie went ahead and drafted again right now. Uh, th this, these are the numbers not only to our office but also to the the DMV uh, service center that Armando was was kind enough to reference. So I went ahead and I threw that in the chat. Feel free to take those number down, those numbers down again. The first number, the five six two number, is to Assembly Member Lisa Calderon's office. Again, we have um, a dedicated staff who will help you liaise between these different state agencies, not only with the DMV, but if you're having issues with any other state agency or have questions just in general, please feel free to call us. And again, that last number there, that 800 number is for the California DMV Service Center. Um, but seeing that there are no questions right now, I, I just wanna go ahead, Armando, thank you so much um, for, for coming out this morning. That concludes our presentation. But again, if you have not had a, a question that you have answered or you have additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to our office and staff and we'll make sure to get you assistance. But again, thank you all so much for, for attending. Uh, we really sincerely appreciate it and we look forward to hosting many more events like this in the future as things open up. I'm sure we can get some, some more uh, uh, in-person events uh, in, in the communities that need them most. So please keep our office in mind if you have any, any other questions. And uh, again, thank you all so much for joining and have a great rest of the day and the weekend. Thank you. Take care, everybody.